I cannot wait to get a larger garage. Right now, what I'm doing is just to get in the garage to work on the Subaru. You can see on this side, not much room. The front, we got some tools and parts, really no room, and absolutely no room for activities on this side of the car, but that's okay, because that's my son's stuff. He needs a little bit of space too. So until we can afford a larger house, even to rent in Southern California with a two car garage is gonna be over $3,000. We're gonna make do with the one car garage, which means working on the engine bay over here means your butt is up against the wall on this side. I know, enough complaining, be grateful for what I have. And we got some work to do on the Subaru, shall we? Welcome back to the Subaru Impreza GC8 build. We have some parts that came in, so we need to get to work. Let's start with this big bag of OEM gaskets. This is gonna help hopefully reseal the oil leak. Rocker cover, rocker cover, valve cover gaskets left and right. We also have a couple of super thick rubber gaskets for the oil separator. And one on each side of the valve cover. There is four of these. They are for the spark plug holes. And I don't know how many of these, a dozen or so, maybe more of the spark plug bolt hole gaskets. Every bolt that holds that valve cover to the head has a gasket. And the only actual fun thing about this whole project will be the half moon billet covers. Um, the ones I have now are plastic. They might be the culprit. Some people have said to change those out. They're just plastic, so they get brittle and they break, and these should outlast probably the car. Next up, we have the Cobb external wastegate uh, fitting upgrade kit and some extra vacuum hose because it only comes with, I think, 10 feet maybe. It's not enough to do the whole wastegate. So we got some extra silicone quarter inch uh, vacuum hose. Not a whole lot in this kit. Here we just have the fittings. These are quarter inch fittings. The original electronic boost controller came with eight inch fittings. Has a T bracket here, some little zip ties. I don't know if I'm going to trust those. I'll probably go something a little better than that. Um, here is the vacuum hose. Yeah. Uh, only a couple feet of that. That's why, like I said, we bought more. And this stuff is actually pretty strong. I mean, you don't want this collapsing. I mean, if you push really hard, it'll collapse on the end, but I mean, it's pretty stiff. So that's the only little thing this kit comes with. And finally, we have the IAG air oil separator conversion kit from competition to streets. I did a lot of research on this. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm just gonna have to have a leap of faith and trust the tuner. Uh, a lot of people, well-known people in the industry, different companies said that convert having the street kit is actually more beneficial than not because you actually get a lot of the scavenging vacuum sucking the crankcase fumes out of the car. So I'm gonna take their word for it and convert that. That is the top of the air oil separator. It's gonna have, uh, I believe, two lines instead of one massive one that I have now on the race kit. Oh, a lot of these fittings that I probably won't be using. Um, like I know this one I already have installed from the race kit. Couple things capped off. There's the big lines here, um, and the main reason that you this kit is actually street is right there. This is a PCV valve installed in the in line, um, so that's going to be what helps me uh, use the turbo inlet as a vacuum source, and that's one way valve, so it will be pulling the fumes out of the crankcase um, and then under boost it should close. Not super excited about this piece but what choice do I have? <laughs> we got a lot to do so we'll see how much we can get done today we'll go from there. Might be three days, might be four days but you're only gonna see a few minutes. 
Lucky you. This is actually gonna be a really good time to do the valve cover gaskets because we have so much of the intercooler piping gone, the intakes gone, the down pipe, the up pipe, the header, the wastegate, that's all gone. So if we need to come underneath, we can. Uh, you can barely see, this is the valve cover right here. I mean, there is almost no room, look at that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm, so much room. Wait, hang on a sec. We have about, oh, and two inches to work to get that sucker off. I know the back bolts are gonna be a little more difficult. And on this side, it's even tighter. We'll probably have to get rid of the battery and this intercooler piping and some wiring because that is even tighter. There it is down there, valve cover. And it goes that way. So, I don't know, I'll probably start on the easy side, give myself some confidence. All right, here we are under the car. Valve cover here. These heads were actually spray painted because race car, I don't know, the guy who did the swap spray painted the whole block and heads black. So that's not all oil. They are a little wet on both sides, um, but I don't think that's where all this oil is coming from. I mean, look, the lower radiator housing is covered in oil. As you move further along the front cover, everything's dripping. You can see drip there, drip there. Sometimes the oil filter gets oil on it. Usually when oil leaks, it usually shoots back towards the car because air is pushing it that way, which would kind of explain why, if you can look, I don't know, it's hard to tell. The lower oil, the oil pan has a leak, but I did reseal that not too long ago when I first bought the car, I put a, um, killer bee pickup and baffle in there so you can see it has all new silicone around it and for a long time it was perfectly fine so i think the valve cover is leaking or the half moons might be um making the back of that oil pan look a little dirty it's really hard to see it back there by the flywheel um but i really don't think it's causing all of this so what we're gonna do is change the valve cover gaskets and clean all this up, see where it's coming from, kind of over it. I don't want to be, I don't want to do oil gaskets anymore. I'm just done. To get access to the driver's side, um, there's a lot of plugs. These main harnesses here, I unplugged, tie them out of the way. Um, I undid the alternator harness, um, the AC compressor cli uh, clip, pull everything you can out of the way, remove the battery. Uh, then you can get to the filler neck too, which I already removed, which goes here comes up so now that's out of the way um, once you get all the bolts out the valve cover should come right out don't forget to pull the coils out and right down the bottom corner here is the dreaded one with no clearance it's really hard to see sorry uh, down there you can see the gold copper um, we might have to remove right here there's barely any clearance um, might have to jack up the engine good thing it's still unbolted at the motor mounts and the trans mount so it might have to get a little bit of clearance but once you undo everything, it makes your life a lot easier to clear everything out of the way and pull the valve cover out. This actually brings me back to being 10 years old, the first time I ever worked on a car with my dad. We were doing the valve cover gasket on a 1987 Mazda 323, which I later learned to drive because it was a manual transmission and it probably began my love for Japanese vehicles. I remember there was parts everywhere, nuts, bolts, oil. I thought the engine was destroyed but we got it back together and my dad always told me he wasn't a very good mechanic, so guess I got that from him too. It is fouling on something. Let's get, let's look at it before we just pull this thing out of here. And look at that, we actually got it out of the car. So here are the spark plug gaskets, the valve cover gasket that goes all the way around here, and that oil separator gasket goes in there. Probably not gonna be the same way putting it back in, so we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna clean this up. A little dirty, a little greasy. Oh, the 
dripping oil everywhere, perfect. We'll throw it in the parts washer and clean it up good. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't have a parts washer. Have you seen my garage? It's freaking tiny. So we'll just clean up a little brake clean. Just like that, the valve cover gaskets have been replaced. I told you guys it was only gonna be a few minutes for you. I will not get into how long it's taken me to do it. Just gotta throw the battery back in and the rest of the exhaust system and a ton of other stuff before we start it. But we are gonna start on the electronic boost control solenoid upgrade kit. I don't really have many standard tools here, so I have the world's largest wrench and we'll try not to break anything. Fittings are out, now I just gotta throw in the new larger ones with a little bit of Loctite. The last fitting you can't put in because it hits this bracket here so looks like there's just two small allen keys to take off this rear bracket i'll just do that real quick don't want to go too tight on these fittings um, it's aluminum body um, just got to figure out how you want to orient the vacuum lines and don't wrench on them too tight they do have Loctite in there so that should seal up any kind of a boost leak but you know how I am I don't know we'll wait and see how it goes there we have it electronic boost controller with upgraded quarter inch fittings and we have the vacuum line right here that'll snug up to that real nice and tight we're gonna get some different clamps to put on there versus these zip ties air oil separator is next we are going to undo a couple screws here and get rid of this top port it's just the vent to atmosphere hose and replace it with this the PCV valve and hose go on the side here and I believe these two ports are for the vacuum Well, this hose is actually supposed to go to the th right underneath the throttle body, but we have a problem. Here is the connector that I took out when I got rid of the PCV system when we installed the Competition Series air oil separator. This is the hose that's supposed to go in there. Um, it does not look like it's going to fit. So well, let's figure out what's supposed to go there because this ain't going to work. This is the PCV valve for the older 2002 to 2003 WRXs, I believe. And this is the nipple that I need. You can see the difference in the hose sizes here. This just goes straight through. It doesn't have the PCV valve in it like this one, but the PCV valve will still be on this line further up towards the air oil separator. Oh, I cannot believe how hot and humid it is in Southern California. Anyway. Subaru project is coming along. We have had some setbacks. Everything we touch, there's two, three, four things that we have to fix and sort out, but we're getting there. 
setbacks happen in, in life in general, not just project cars. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to work towards the outcome and you can't give up. I mean, hoses, gaskets, fittings, extra parts, the right parts have to be ordered for this thing every time I, I touch something. So I try my best to think ahead, which is a good thing it's a good thought process but you're not going to be able to predict everything that you're going to need and it's just it's just like i said setbacks happen you have to be willing to roll with the punches and work through them we still have to refit the exhaust manifold the up pipe the down pipe figuring out the corrosion on the external wastegate the intake so yeah there's a few things left we still have to do but i'm committed to the outcome i'm willing to work towards it I want to do it right the first time. I don't want to take this thing apart three and four or five more times. I just want to get it done and enjoy it. With that being said, I appreciate everybody watching and I really hope that you have a great day. Please support the channel. Watch another video. Hit the thumbs up down below and like it. Also subscribe. If you want to see me keep making videos, I need your help to grow. Thank you.